Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel, He who was and is and is to come. How great is our God, how great is His name. He's the greatest one forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. He says, I will lead you if you will trust in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All the angels of the heavens and the earth bows before him. The heaven and the earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our day. Welcome into our time. Welcome into this season. Take full control, O gracious, wonderful God, all of you and none of us. We surrender all to you, all that we are, all that we can ever be, and all that we will ever do. We surrender to you and ask that you will lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We desire to be holy as you are holy. We desire to walk in forgiveness, in love, in repentance, in grace and in mercy as you desire for us that we might hear well done thou good and faithful servant we ask that you will teach us O god each day how to walk in the fullness of your wisdom and understanding how to walk in the fullness of your power and might your spirit of counsel hallelujah hallelujah your spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord that we might truly embody the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit for your glory and for your name's sake. Have your way in us and through us, O God. Have your way in us and through us. Give us the answers. Answers. Download your revelation. Not just your revelation knowledge, O God Almighty, but let the spirit of the gift of discernment be so evident in our lives that we become the, your answer to what ails mankind everywhere that we go may we be as the walking talking living christ in the earth as the disciples were so let it be unto us in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth have your way father have your way in us and through us ah file down our imperfections and anything in us O god almighty that continues to reign may it not rain because we are hard-hearted but may it rain because it is used to to, to bring others to their place of peace, to their place of humility, to their place of blessing, to their place of overflow, to their place of patience. Oh, Father, have your way, have your way, have your way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory be to the God of all gods, the gift of God. Hallelujah is you, O oh God, your best gift is the gift of your presence. Your best gift is the gift of your goodness and mercy. Your best gift is the gift of your love. So Lord, gift us with your love. Let the liquid presence of your love manifest in our hearts to bring humility, to bring peace, to bring joy, to bring grace and mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name, O God. You are awesome in this place, almighty God. You are worthy of all praise, Almighty God. To you, our lives we raise, Almighty God. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. There is none like you. No one else can touch our hearts like you do. We could search throughout eternity, O oh God, but we would never find any like you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every one of you hallelujah who have gathered here to worship the lord to hear from the lord to be blessed and sanctified by the lord to be healed delivered set free and made whole by the lord we have great expectations of the presence of the holy spirit of god manifesting to do and to be for god almighty's good pleasure for his name's sake and for his righteousness sake and so as we arise early in the morning we give our God thanks. We give our God praise. We say hallelujah to our, to our King. We say, Lord, we come right now at this moment to say thank you. Thank you, O great and awesome King. Thank you, O ruler of everything. 
thank you hallelujah that you're not just a part of our lives but oh father you are truly our everything your love reaches way down deep within reaches to the places of our sin reaches to the places where we hide our uh, simple things deep within your love reaches way down and it passes all human understanding it passes what we try to hide it passes what we don't even recognize your love passes our understanding hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah today we have accomplished one thing we have come to recognize that you are truly a good king a wonderful king a great king hallelujah how awesome you are oh god you are awesome in this place yes you are awesome in this place almighty god mm. you are awesome in this place our father lord you're worthy of all praise to you our lives we raise you are awesome in this place mighty god come on tell him this morning in your own words lord you're awesome in this place you're the mighty god mm. you are awesome in this place Abba Father, Lord, you're worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. Lord, you're awesome in this place. Yes, you're awesome in this place. Oh Lord, you're awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised hallelujah he's worthy you are alpha oh yes he is and omega we worship you a few seconds a few minutes just giving God our own personal praise your own personal favorite worship song that song that connects you to the presence of the living God that song that gets you into that place where there's a face-to-face -face encounter come on in your own space sing that song of praise sing that song of worship sing that song of glory unto him in your own space this morning don't look for someone else to take you into his presence go into his presence on your own he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be adored he is waiting on you he's standing at your door and he's knocking and he's saying will you let me in let me in that i may come and sup with you let me in that i may come and embrace you let me in that i may come and bless you let me in that i may come and heal you let me in that i may come and deliver you let me in that i may come and make you 
whole. Let him in by your worship this morning. There must be, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about whether or not you can sing. I sing every day and I'm not a singer. Hallelujah. But I just want to give God glory. And no one is listening to you. It doesn't matter who is hearing you. Just worship the Lord in your own way this morning. If you want to just, just say hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. If you want to speak the words, come on. Hallelujah. If you want to speak the words of a song unto him, just declare unto him, Lord, I worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Hallelujah. Give me vision, O oh Lord, to see things like you do. O oh God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, O oh God, to know just what to do. Yes. Hey, glory to God. Come on, on your own. I know you have some worship songs. Some of you can sing. Just built out some worship to the Lord in your own space and place this morning. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just let God know that you desire his presence. You desire His to take for him to take you higher. You desire him to set you on fire that yes your, your 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 fingers begin to burn your your heart begin to burn your feet begin to burn your hands begin to burn hallelujah even your very heart your heart and your mind begins to burn your soul begins to burn because god has earned your worship he has earned your declare de declaration he has earned hallelujah your presence to bow before the king bow down and worship him, worship him, oh worship him, bow down and worship him, enter in, oh enter in. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fill this room. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. So come and worship him. As we bow down before our Lord, our God, our Savior, and our King this morning, we declare that he alone is worthy. He alone is God all by himself. Jehovah is his name. He is awesome in this place. He is our almighty God. He is worthy of all praise, worthy. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth is his name. He is coming soon. He is coming for you and for me. He is coming and it's working. Yes, hallelujah. His spirit is working for us, working to bring us to that place of recognition, working to bring us to that place of perfection, working to bring us to that place, hallelujah, of resurrection. God wants to resurrect us from the dead things, the dead spaces, the dead thought processes, the dead actions, everything that will die as a result of our actions needs to die. Everything that we used to do needs to die. Everything that is not pleasing in the sight of God needs to die so that we can truly live according to his will and purpose. God wants everything of Satan. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity like David. But every day, David had to allow God to kill something in him that shaped him in iniquity. And so day by day by day by day, the only person, the only people that are not patient with our daily dying are human beings. Come on, God is patient with our human, our humanity. God is patient with our daily dying. Our daily dying is important to God. It is not that we are not perfect. It is that we are not dying daily. 
Come on. Hallelujah. God is not concerned. Come on. Write that down, somebody. God is not concerned, Tamika. God is not concerned that you are not perfect. He is not. Because it, his, remember, the apostle, the prophet, the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist, these are the, the, the fivefold ministries. And they were introduced to the earth by the Holy Spirit for the perfecting of the saints. Come on, for the maturing of the saints. And so God is not interested necessarily in you being perfect now. What he's interested in is your daily perfection your daily perfecting, your daily commitment to being perfected by his spirit. Why is that so? Because daily we have to exercise, demonstrate faith. And faith is what we demonstrate when we are being perfected. Faith in patience, faith in, in, in love, faith in honor, faith in the effort that we put in because we know that the perfect God wants to perfect us and it's difficult it's difficult it's not easy but we are committed to the covenant of perfection because the perfect god that lives in us wants to perfect us from the inside out and so every little idiosyncrasy every little issue every little problem every little blemish every little blot every little thing that sometimes annoys god and not man but most times annoys man and not God. Come on. Hallelujah. And so man will try to pressure you. Man will try to pressure you to be perfect. But remember this. God is perfecting you from the inside out. And it may take a little time. Because it may look like the size of man when you turn sideways is not great enough for depth. Hear me carefully. Practically. Man may look at the size of you, and no matter how big you are, if you are 600 pounds, the width of your body is still not wide enough for it to take that long for you to be perfected from the inside out. That's how man sees it in their natural eyes. And so they expect that in a year, in two days, in 20 days, in two hours, that perfection that God has started on your inside should come to your outside. But that's an unreasonable request because David, David was being perfected by God and up until his deathbed, the job still went on. As thin as he was, the job still went on. There were some people who lived and died and it is their, it's God's grace why they made it into heaven because they still were not perfect. Moses was considered the meekest man on earth. Yet still, the reason he didn't go into the promised land was because he still had imperfections. Come on, is somebody hearing me this morning? There are some people who are under pressure in their situation, under pressure at work, under pressure in their relationship, under pressure with their family, under pressure in their community, because people expect that because you name the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are supposed to be perfect. Anything that annoys them, anything that frustrates them about you, they desire for you to be perfect. Not themselves. You must be perfect so that they can be comfortable in their imperfections around you. And it is not fair. But guess what? That's how it is. And you have to, part of your perfect thing each day is learning to just be humble and to just say, you know what? I am being pressured to be perfect and I have to deal with other people's imperfections. And that's fine because that's part of the journey that you walk. It's part of the maturity. And let me tell you this, those people in your office, those people in your house, those people in your community, those people that are around you that desires your perfection and are frustrating and annoying you to be perfect while you are frustrated and annoyed as well, again, in their imperfections, you will get to a higher level of anointing, a higher level of respect from God when you do not seek to point out their imperfections. You just continue to allow God to perfect you every day. Come on, is somebody encouraged this morning? I know that the pressure is on, especially when you name the name of Jesus. The pressure is on from your spouse, from your children. The pressure is on from your co-workers. 
Oh, but you're a Christian. You're not supposed to. Oh, but you're a Christian. What is this? Oh, and you say you're a Christian. And they, they, they pressure you. They pressure you. They pressure you. Come on. But guess what? Pressure only bursts weak pipe. Pressure only destroys weak pipes, weak holes. Anything that has a big enough flaw or anything that the flaw is not being fixed, the pressure of this life, the pressure of this world will break it. If you are not flawed from the outside going in, then what's coming from the inside out will not destroy you. It will just make you stronger. And so set your heart to be strong. One of the ways that you know you are growing and maturing is when an imperfect person who you have seen and, and, and look past their imperfections begin to point out your perfections in ways that are hurtful and painful and debilitating and destructive and you still just take it and say okay okay and don't point to theirs because when you point to theirs yours is not being fixed what you're doing is creating a balance oh so i can stay imperfect because you are imperfect too you're creating a balance you won't grow like that you have to learn to be quiet like Jesus before Pontius Pilate and Herod and take the unfair treatment. Because the truth is, if you are still, if you are imperfect for real, then you are. And that's the truth. And so you have to accept it and say, ah, let me take mine. But the moment you begin, watch me, one indication of pride, one indication of pride, and no matter how you try to spin it, no matter how you try to polish it, no matter how you try to send it in a different direction, one indication of pride is when a flaw is pointed out in you, you then turn around. Rather than accept that this is a flaw, rather than accept that, yes, ah, uh, mm -hmm, I am flawed. God forgive me. God help me. Mature in me each day, O oh God, that I may grow and come to that perfecting that you desire for me rather than accepting that as it is legitimate you then turn and say but you have 10 flaws you have 15 flaws you have 20 flaws how does that affect the flaw in you are you saying that because I have more flaw than you that your flaw should stay that your flaw doesn't need to be fixed that God is not doesn't desire to perfect you from the inside out is that what you're saying that's pride look in the mirror and say Lord deliver me from pride that I might be perfected each day come on Lord deliver me Rowan Eastern Wade from pride that your spirit can perfect me each day from the inside out Come on, we have to be real in this time because God is coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. And there are hundreds of millions of us as Christians who are so flawed and not funny, but we never see it because we keep only seeing other people's flaws and we hide ours. We stay behind ours because we are flaw inspectors. We inspect the flaws of others while ours go untouched. And when God begins to inspect ours we're going to be so surprised what i didn't know that i had i didn't know i didn't i didn't but by that time it will be too late let us inspect our own flaws through and through day by day so that god can truly truly perfect us does it mean that if there is flaw in someone that you shouldn't help them by pointing it out i'm not saying that at all no i'm not saying that i would love for you to point out mine show me where i'm in error show me where i'm go i've gone wrong but don't keep showing me where i have gone wrong but don't require or desire for yours to be highlighted or when yours is highlighted you get all upset and carry on and throw a tantrum that's pride pride p-r-i-d-e either pride or fear fear of being exposed Fear of being shown as one who is imperfect. Fear as being shown as one who presents one way but is another. Let us not be driven by fear or pride, but by humility and by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God. 
hey, all creatures here below. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to submit each day, every day. Don't be this this discombobulated <laughs> yes i know uh, don't be don't be distraught or distressed by the the, the, the difficulties or the things that are still uh, weighing us down as flaws just constantly as sister sonia said lord beat unto us each day help us each day lord cover us each day deliver us each day cleanse us each day have a ceremony like you did for Joshua the high priest in Zechariah 3 each day. Change our robe that is spotted each day and make us anointed sons that you can trust. Be in us each day, O oh God, and take full control, dominion and power, grace and mercy, love and self-control. Let it be our portion each day that each day there will be a perfecting of the saints. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That is it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, karabaso, rabashiko, rebasunda, mande usebere shika. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we bless your name. We praise your name. We honor your name. We declare that this is the time and the season. Oh, God Almighty. Where you are perfecting us oh father mm, hallelujah 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 great grace great grace great grace great grace upon us oh god father as we come before you this morning the end of one month and transitioning into the other we pray oh god that you will cover us cover us oh god almighty in this month of april Lord, the time is, is, is just moving so fast. We see your word coming to pass that says that you will shorten the days for the elect's sake. Lord God Almighty, we thank you that on this day that you have made, on this day that you have made, we are we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so, Father, we thank you that you have kept us through the month of March. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, that as we transition into April, God, it is well. You have said that it is well. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we know, April is well. April is the month of blessing. April is the month of favor. April is the month of grace. April is the month of increase. April is the month when the appointed will be anointed and will come into the appointed time of God the appointed blessings and the favor and open doors of God. April is the month of breakthrough and breakout and break free. April is the month of breakthrough. Yes, breakthrough. This is the month where we will see breakthroughs. January, February, March, April. Yes, April is the month of breakthrough when the, 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 the triune God Hallelujah, has perfected that which concerns us in the first three months. And now the fourth month of the year, God will honor, hallelujah, his word in our lives. And so I prophesy that this month of April will see some grace, the grace of God being manifested in our lives. The grace of God will be manifested to draw us close to him. As one songwriter says, draw me close to you. Yes, that's it. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. Jesus, to hear you say that I'm your friend. Hi, God, help me find a way. Bring me back to you, Jesus. You're all I want. Mm. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want, oh God, help me know you are near. Hallelujah. And so if we get breakthrough in this month of April, breakthrough to know that our God is near, breakthrough to know that we are loose from the plans of the enemy, loose from the thoughts in our minds, loose from the burdens and the yokes that we have carried, that breakthrough will allow us to step into the month of April 
unhindered, unencumbered, unchained, unshackled. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me this morning? We are declaring that March is the last day that we will be arrested, that we will be locked up, that we will be imprisoned, that we will be bound because our breakthrough is here. Breakthrough in our finances. Breakthrough in our, our blessing. Breakthrough in our deliverance. Breakthrough breakthrough in our health breakthrough with our marriages come on hallelujah breakthrough with getting married breakthrough with getting financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we are declaring that this is our month of breakthrough and on the on the, on the first day of the month the breakthrough the first breakthrough that we will celebrate as a family is the breakthrough of the birthday of our sister alicia and so lord god almighty we thank you that even now as we are celebrating today oh god almighty the beginning of the month we declare that our sister alicia is blessed already she is blessed to be oh god almighty a breakthrough agent she will not just walk in the fullness of breakthroughs but she will be the source through which other get breakthrough I thank you for uncommon increase not just for Alicia oh God Almighty but for every member of this family I thank you that the month of April will see doors open hallelujah hallelujah hey Jesus I thank you that the doors will be opening and opportunities will come and even as she will not be able to be here to hear our breakthrough declarations over her tomorrow we declare them today we say happy birthday happy blessed day happy anointed day happy breakthrough day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Alicia Edwards in the name of Jesus I declare that as your name has been changed to a new name as you have left your mother and father in the realm of the spirit and have joined with your partner join with your rib and have become one have become whole I declare that this birthday present will be your best birthday present I declare that your birthday shall be blessed by God in an uncommon way in your marriage that favor shall be in your marriage favor shall be in your physical health favor shall be in your womb favor shall be in your mind favor shall be in your intestines favor shall be all over you yet they, when, wherever you go people shall call you the woman of favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and so I release the favor of God upon you and upon every member of this family I declare April 1st the birthday hallelujah for every fourth watch family member glory to God in the same way that sister Alicia hallelujah has just stepped out and, and, and just believe God and, and, and with her prayer and commitment and covenant and seed and, and, and prayers hallelujah has seen God's hand I thank you Lord that every member of this family beginning the 1st of April beginning in this in this month of April shall see your blessing shall see your favor shall walk in overflow shall walk in the fullness of the breakthrough Lord when you called uh, Abraham that was a breakthrough the breakthrough was him obeying and leaving as he walked away from his father's house he walked into his breakthrough as Moses walked away from his family and walked into your presence on the holy ground in front of the burning bush he walked into his breakthrough I declare this morning that the voice of God that touched Abraham and called him away from his father's house is coming into our lives this morning into this fourth watch hour into this fourth watch family and calling us away to the place of our breakthrough I declare that this fourth watch hour and this fourth watch altar this morning represents the holy ground that Moses stood on and was called into his breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare that as Abraham went and wherever his eyes looked and his feet trod he owned so it shall be for us I declare that as Moses walked and his rod became the representation of God's power God's protection God's blessing God's strength God's healing God's deliverance God's might so we shall have God's word in our mouth that is that will be like Moses's rod in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare that this month of April shall see 
us doing and being great and mighty for the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare that this month of April, we shall see breakthroughs in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That we shall get deeper into him and miracles, signs and wonders, transformation, reconciliation, that our family members shall see the glory of God. Her, our children shall be saved, transformed, renewed, restored, reconciled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We shall live in the Shekinah glory presence of the Lord God Almighty, that our feet shall stand up on holy ground at all times. No matter what happens, whether we're sitting down, standing up, or sleeping, we shall be on holy ground because we carry our holy ground anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that this month of April, we shall see breakthroughs in divine visitation, divine anointing, divine power shall be ours in this season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Lord, that April shall represent new beginning for all in this family in the name of Jesus. New beginning for things that were held up. New beginning for things that have been delayed, derailed, or denied. New beginning for things that were dead that the enemy killed will come alive in this season like, 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 like Lazarus in the mighty name of Jesus. Like the little girl, hallelujah, that Jesus said, Teletha Kuma, little girl, arise. I, I thank you, Lord, that everything... That that is a little girl that has died in the women on this platform this morning. I thank you, God, that in the month of April, those dead little girls shall come alive and shall be uh, active in the future of these women of God that have been hurt. Some of them, oh God Almighty, died at 14, died at 13, died at 12, based on rejection, based on un abandonment, based on uh, abuse, all these little things. They're alive even now. But when their childhood died, their little girl, the little girl in them died. Father, we command those little girls who died in some of these women to come alive now, come alive now, come alive now. Some of them died, oh God Almighty, because of the poverty, lack and insufficiency that they experienced when they were growing up. And so they didn't get a chance to live good, to eat lollipop, to play, to eat mangoes and to and to do good things, didn't get a chance to get proper schooling. And so now they've had to be trying to make ends meet as adults. And it has been difficult because the academic power and the academic foundation was not there, God Almighty. And so they have regrets. They keep looking back to their childhood and saying, if things were different, if I was born in a different country, if I was born in a different community, if I was born to a different family, maybe things would have been different. That's a dead little girl. But today, Father, we declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every regret as a little girl, every regret as a little boy, every regret that you have experienced that has that continues to affect, hallelujah, every dead thing in your childhood that continues to affect you now, in your behavior, in your attitude, in your thought process, in your, in your aspirations, in your goals, in your drive, in your dream, I command that dead little boy, I command that dead little girl to come alive now in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of regret that has buried that man of God, that woman of God, I command you to loose them now. I roll away that stone and I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. I roll away that grave cloth from your youth in the name of Jesus and I release you to flourish. I release you to increase. I release you into your breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel the enemy's plan to keep you in, in a dead place. I cancel the enemy's plan to keep you in a tomb. Lazarus didn't stay in that tomb and neither did Jesus. Come on, you are Jesus' bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the bride of Christ. Therefore, you cannot die. You must live to declare the works of the Lord. And so everything that was dead in your life, killed by Lucifer and his agents, even some of your family members that has killed your childhood and has not seen, you have not seen the benefits of your adulthood through your childhood eyes. I command those childhood dreams. I command those childhood desires. I command everything that you lost in your childhood years to be replenished, to be restored, to be reconciled unto you in double portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We pursue in this month of April, overtake 
and recover your breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare April the month of breakthrough and we thank you that we shall see it, we shall live it, we shall enjoy it, we shall touch it, we shall taste it, and we shall give it to others as well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to just say, Lord, thank you for my breakthrough. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead. Lord, Lord thank you for my breakthrough. Thank you for my breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. In my family. In my family. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. In my community. In my community. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. In my nation. My nation. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. In the world. In the world. In the name of Jesus, In the Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Lord. Lord. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. In my health. In my health. In my finances. In my finances. In my thought process. In my thought process. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for breakthrough. In my spiritual growth. In my spiritual growth. And development. And development. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Thank you, Lord. That this month of April. That this month of April will see me bigger. Will see me bigger and better. And better in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit than I've ever been. Than I've ever been. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That this month of April. That this month of April will be the month. Will be the month when every lion. When every lion. Every bear. Every bear. Every Goliath. Every Goliath, every principality, every principality, every powers, every powers, every spiritual wickedness, every spiritual wickedness in high places, in high places that come against my breakthrough, that come against my breakthrough, will fall to the ground, will fall to the ground and die by fire, and die by fire in the mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my breakthrough. For my breakthrough. Thank you for this month of April. Thank you for this month of April. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That I will walk. That I will walk. In such great breakthroughs. In such great breakthroughs. That others will see me. That others will see me. And ask me. And ask me. How come? How come? Why? Why? Where can they? Where can they? How can they? How can they? Get the breakthroughs. Get the breakthroughs. That I walk in. That I walk in. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our God reigns. Yes, the month of April has been prepared for breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. God is a faithful God. Mm we look forward to breakthrough we look forward to breakthrough in this war in the in europe uh in the name of jesus we look forward to breakthrough with gas prices not breaking through the roof but breaking back down to the foundation hallelujah we look forward to food prices being restored to the, the, the manageable place we look forward to breakthrough in the finances for the poor and the the, the less fortunate the most at-risk people, the widows and the orphans, we look forward to breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ, that the Lord will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. We look forward to breakthrough with great anticipation and expectation that this is the month of April where we shall see all the seeds that we have been sowing over the years come to harvest, come to harvest, and it shall bring forth multiple fruit, multiple fruit, wheat and fruits all over we shall see as we walk in the fullness of this month of breakthrough in the name of jesus christ hallelujah and so each day you have to try to remember even if you have to write it down hallelujah i hope i can remember uh, lord thank you for my breakthrough thank you that this month is the month of breakthrough i thank you for breakthroughs lord Thank you for breakthroughs in certain areas. Come on. As a matter of fact, what you should probably do is write down, write breakthrough at the top, April, the month of breakthrough, and write some of the things that you would like to see God give you breakthroughs in. Come on. Hallelujah. We are believing God that he will give you breakthroughs in all the things on the lists. But always remember that God gives you what will benefit you. There are some people who are saying, God, I need breakthrough for a husband but you're not ready. I need breakthrough for a wife, but you're not ready. And so you might say, but pastor, you said that this is the month of breakthrough and I don't meet or hear from or, 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 or have any contact with the spouse that I'm looking for and I want to get married this month. Hallelujah. Or I want to get married this year. You have to make sure everything that you write on the list, you have to also say, God, I write this list as a desire of my heart, but I submit that desire to you according to your will. That is perfect. 
according to your will that is perfect because God will have a difficulty giving us that which will harm us. Amen. He has done it in the past when we have draw like 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 with Hezekiah. So you can you can draw on the Hezekiah situation and say, but God, you gave Hezekiah 15 more years. And look what he did. He took people into the temple and showed them the sacred things. The enemy at that, he he um he produced Manasseh, who turned out to be the worst king over Israel ever, who did such heinous things. Uh, and you could use that. But God did not make a mistake. Maybe, maybe, just maybe one of the many reasons, because we can never know everything that whatever reason why God does something. But maybe one of those reasons is for us to look back today and have a reference point to say, God, don't give me what I what I want. Give me what I need. Hezekiah did not need 15 more years of life. I am telling you, without fear of contradiction, Hezekiah did not need 15 more years of life. But because he had a covenant with God and God had a covenant with him, he forced that covenant. And because God is a covenant keeping God, God allowed him to live 15 more years. And it was the bane of his existence, the pain of his existence, the destruction of his bloodline. Aye. And so, let us learn from Hezekiah. Let us not desire, come on, what it is that we want. But let us place our list before God and say, God, you can see this list, but you can also see my future. That which I need, grant unto me from this list. And anything you do not give me a breakthrough on in this month of April, I will humble myself and wait either for it to come in, in the future or for it not to come at all because you have made a sovereign decision that this that I have asked for is not according to your will and will not benefit your glory or my story in Jesus name come on can you remember that hallelujah are we humble enough can we be humble enough to write a list of things not in the writing that proves our humility but in the expectation of what we have written. Many people have been discouraged. Lord, look how long I've been waiting on you for this. Look how long. But hardly any of us say, Lord, I continue to wait upon you. And if it is that you do not wish to give me this thing, then I humbly submit and take it off the list. I take it out of my mind and I say, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Do what only you can do. I am here to tell you that I wish, I wish to God, I wish by prophetic decree, I wish by everything that is in me that I could guarantee, that I could guarantee by the Spirit of God without shadow of a doubt that every single person that wants to be married will be. I wish I could guarantee it. I wish, I swear to you, with the most sincere heart I could muster, I wish I could guarantee it. But I'm here to tell you that many who love God, many who love God, have committed and dedicated themselves to God, also wanted to be married and died without seeing it. God is sovereign. I pray that none of my brothers and sisters that are under the sound of my voice, wherever you might be, will qualify as one of those to pay that price, to sacrifice all the way to the end or to the coming of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you the truth of the matter is, no matter what you believe, no matter how big your faith is, there are some people who will not get some things that they are believing God for. Because that's just the way it is. God is sovereign. And it's not because he's punishing us. It's not because he's saying, well, you're not getting that and that's it. It's not because of what we did or what was done to us or what was done through us. That's not it. God makes sovereign decisions, but always out of love. 
never out of judgment or, pun or, or punishment or, um, or hatred or anger. Every decision that God makes, it's a decision based in love. Amen. And so we have to come to that place where we understand it, even if we don't accept it. Because we're not always going to accept all the decisions that God makes on our behalf. But if we understand this heart, if we understand that it is out of love, then, you know, I was in a meeting yesterday, a pastor's meeting, and we were just, you know, just being real and talking about the things that we have faced and the things that are going on and, 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 and just um, uh, whole, whole, whole certain things. And um, one, one of the pastor was saying, you know, I, I, for years I've been struggling, for about eight years I've been struggling with an issue um, with a family member. And no matter how I pray, I pray earnestly, I pray sincerely, I pray, I pray, I pray, I declare, I decree, I stand in faith, I do everything that I can, and I still see no budge, no movement, no work of God in my family member. Yet still, I go to places in Jamaica, in the world, and I pray, and boom, immediately, there is deliverance, boom, there is healing. Boom. there is blessing there is breakthrough and I'm saying God what is this what is this but you know what was profound he says I still have to believe I still have to believe in God's ability to heal my family member not in God's uh, requirement to do it but in his ability to do it God is not required to do anything for us. He has the ability to do anything for us. But he sometimes won't because he's working on a greater plan. That son of God has learned humility, patience, love, serving beyond measure. Serving beyond measure for this family member. He has learned the heart of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he has learned to submit to God's sovereign authority and will in the midst of that situation. If he had just said, God, I thank you that you are the healer and you promised us that healing is the children's bread. You promised us that by your stripes we are healed. And boom, healing came to that family member. He would never have learned the myriad of things that he has learned over the years about how to sacrifice, how to obey, how to stay in faith regardless. Today his greatest um, victory is that he can be calm in the midst of this storm but still believe that the storm will end. My God. Hallelujah. Is that ministering to anybody this morning? Are you going through something that you don't want to take with the same mindset into this month of breakthrough? Because our mindset, our heart position, so to speak, will sometimes delay, derail, or even deny our breakthrough. Because sometimes our breakthrough is not in what literally manifests, but in what doesn't. <laughs> sometimes our breakthrough is not in what literally manifests for us but in what doesn't manifest can we live with that can we accept that God is sovereign can we accept that God is ever living ever faithful ever true can we accept that God is perfect in all of his ways can we accept that God loves us more than we love ourselves and will do for us more than we could ever desire to do for ourselves. If we can come to that place of peace, of comfort, of faithfulness, then we are ready to do great and mighty things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 
what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. And so we are praying this month that breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough will be our portion. Breakthrough, hallelujah, will carry us to the end. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. That's right, Sister Joan. He is the unchangeable God. He changes not. He is consistent. We like to see as Christians the good parts of God. The great parts of God, the awesome parts of God, the parts of God that, 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 that pays our bills right on time, that gives us a financial breakthrough. We get a call or a text or a WhatsApp from, from, from someone overseas that says, hey, I've sent you some money through MoneyGram or Western Union. Or, or Zoom or wherever or transferred some money to your account. That's the God that we celebrate. That's the God that we say, yes, hallelujah. We give our highest shouts. We run and jump and dance and sing. But when God says, he is not the one, she is not the one, break it off. And you don't see an alternative and you have invested years. When someone says, leave my property, come out of my house, and you don't see an alternative. You're trying to find somewhere else to move to, but there is nothing that is coming up. And you're going through emotional trauma because this person keeps insisting, I want you out of my place. And you're saying, I, I, I want to leave, but I can't. I don't. And they're embarrassing you. They're coming to your workplace and saying, you need to come out of my place. They're calling your family members, calling your friends and telling them how you are unreasonable and unfair and you don't want to come out of them place. And you are so ashamed that you don't want to go to work. You don't want to talk to anyone. You want to hide because you're ashamed. And you're saying, God, why are you allowing this? Why are you allowing this person to humiliate me so? Why are you allowing this person to cause me such great distress? You said if I look to you, I will be radiant and my face will never be covered with shame. And God is saying in his still small voice, yes, I said that. But that is only for those who are not covered in pride. Mm. Mm -mm. Allow that to soak for a little bit. If God allows you to go through something, any of us, to go through something that seems prideful, dishonoring, debilitating, disgusting, come on, shameful, it's not because God wants to embarrass us, it's because he wants us to realize that, listen, there is pride hidden in you that is hidden under my blessing, that is hidden from show because of my blessing. And so if my blessing is not evident, if my breakthrough is not evident in the situation that you are looking for, then your pride will seek to defend it. Can you, in the midst of such embarrassment, say, Lord, I thank you that whatever it is that you're working in me, you will reveal and heal. With it you will deal. Even if I squeal, you will make me real until I no longer feel, but operate from what I know. And you can put me on show in Jesus' name. As we go through embarrassing things, embarrassment is a soulish reaction. It's a soulish emotion. And it is an emotion built on the foundation of pride. Amen. Amen. I know it's tough, but if we really want the breakthroughs that we're looking for, we have to try our best to do everything we can not to facilitate our breakthroughs not coming through. We must not facilitate the delay of our breakthrough. Let us open our hearts, open ourselves, identify where there is still pride, where there is still fear where there is still doubt, where there is still faithlessness, where there is still dishonor, where there is still lack of love. And sometimes some of these things cannot come to the fore if God's blessing, God's favor, God's anointing and power is still working in all of his ways on us. The man of God's anointing is working outside but not working inside. Because if it don't work outside, he can always go home 
and find comfort in the peace and safety of his home position. So if he prays for someone outside and they don't get healed, whatever they want to say, that's up to them. It's not him, it's God. But when he's at home and has to see a person, a child, a spouse, every day, not getting the benefits of the anointing upon his or her life, then that will truly be an exposure of our hearts. Hey, tough, but God. So let us go into April understanding what is required to walk in our breakthrough, understanding what is required to be and to do for God's good pleasure, understanding how we must live, how we must think, how we must move, how we must have our being in the fullness of God, that our breakthrough will be truly that, a breakthrough. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh, Jesus. Marlon, you're not easy, you know. Marlon, say, if you go to work and announce that you, find, you need to find a place because you got notice, you will not be embarrassed when the landlord come. Yeah, you, 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 would, you would hope that that is the case. But what about if you, if you say, I don't want anybody at work, know my business. Because <laughs> there, there, there are many of us like that. And that is where who me i am a private person i am very confidential i don't want anybody to know my business no sir me I, mm -mm, especially at work oh gosh those people at, at work they will chat you they will gossip over over everything that concerns you i am not telling them anything and then because of that hard position the lord allows the landlord to come right to your office and create excitement because he wants to kill that pride he wants to kill. He wants to uproot that pride in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, as we become more mature in God, pride gets harder to detect because pride is not always a set hard position. Pride is not always a position that says, this is how I want it and this is how it is. That's easy to detect. When those positions are filed down and gone, then it becomes that intimate little, minute, microscopic, mustard seed element of pride that God has to go deep into and unveil. And the, great, the higher we go in God is the harder pride is to identify, not to root out. Pride is a duppy, a spirit, a demon, a devil. They come, it comes out at the command of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that. He comes up and out. But it is the identifying him that's difficult. Pride has so many different aliases. He's greater than any spy. That boy called Pride. He has about 150,000 passports. His picture looks the same. Come on, somebody. His picture looks the same. But his name changes by the moment. His name changes by the person by the situations, by the circumstances. He is called by many names, many, many names. Though he looks the same, his name is different. Amen. So let's ask God. God, tell me the name of the pride that is in me. Because all of us have a little bit. Most of us don't admit it. And that's the name of a pride as well. That pride is called denial. You know, Vex? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm talking to myself, man. Y'all just overhearing, okay? So I'm preaching to myself this morning. But let's get that thing out if it is there. Let's search. It is better to search, to cleanse. It is better to clean a house that does not need cleaning than not to clean a house that you think is clean, but it is not clean. Amen? It is better to have something on you that you don't need than to need something that you don't have. So let's search ourselves and clean, repent and clean, repent and clean, and let God say, it's okay, you are clean. There is no pride in you. 
There's no fear in you. There's no doubt in you. There's no faithlessness in you. You are my good and faithful servant. And chances are, none of us in this earth, and I'm not prophesying now, but chances are, none of us in this earth will get to that place. John the Baptist, Jesus said, if you think I'm just talking off the top of my head, Jesus said of John, of a man born of a woman, there is none greater. Yet still, hallelujah, of those in heaven, my God, he is the least. He said that Moses was the meekest man. Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham believed God. Abraham was God's friend. Paul, man, when you look at the life of Paul, that's as good as it gets. Yet still, when Barnabas said, can we take John Mark? I want my cousin John Mark to come. Paul said, no, he can't come. He doesn't deserve to be on this mission. Paul, you know, the one who wrote in every situation, give thanks. The one who was the epitome of humility. After a while, after God continually perfected him, but he blocked and even end up in an argument, a disagreement that went their separate ways with Barnabas because he refused to forgive John Mark for a faux pas, a weakness, a flaw that he demonstrated before. But praise God, as God perfected Paul and killed his pride, later on, he was given an opportunity to demonstrate how much he had grown and he said, send me John Mark, for he's of great value to the ministry. Come on. And so let's not judge ourselves or others on the basis of where they were or how they are being perfected day by day. But rather, let's look to the forward. Let's look to the time. Let's look with anticipation and expectation that as God perfects us, that we will be of great value to the ministry Jesus Woo! oh my God what an awesome God hallelujah there is hope in God's commitment to deliverance amen hallelujah 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 bless the Lord oh my soul wow I'm telling you this 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 end of month going into the next month has been a very exciting one and I hope that you are enticed and encouraged. And we just want to, to, to finish off uh, this morning's lesson. Hallelujah. From Romans 12 regarding appointed for sacrifice. In the few minutes that we have. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, Sharika. That's it. Uh, me too. Lord, deliver us. Come on. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's just declare that in the atmosphere even now. Let's just ask God sincerely to deliver us from the spirit of pride in your own space, in your own place. Ask God to search from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Lord, if there be any pride hidden under any cell in our DNA that came down from our mother's side or our father's side or our great grandparents' side. Lord, if there be any pride in any member of this family, oh God Almighty, we, we submit it to you. We put it on the altar this morning and we say, God, uproot, uproot any pride masquerading as 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 sensitivity as 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 hurt feelings any pride oh god almighty hiding under any other cover any other name god we ask that you will unveil reveal heal deliver set free and make whole in the mighty name of jesus christ lord you said you keep the proud afar off and that doesn't mean that if we're afar off we won't be able to pray and see things happen we won't grow in prayer we won't grow in anointing it doesn't yes, mean lord, that oh jesus. god almighty what it means is that we will not have the level of intimacy oh, that we need lord. to have because we're afar off because god you have already given us the gifts and talents and abilities you have already given us the anointing because you have appointed us but it doesn't mean that we are close because you keep the proud afar off and so lord because we do not desire 
as a family yes, to be kept far off we do not desire even to be kept at arm's length we want to be right up in your presence right yes, up so. in your shekinah glory mm -hmm. right up where your shekinah presence yes, will Jesus. burn out every imperfection and so lord we ask this morning by the fire that you sent for elijah mm -hmm. by the fire that you sent into the promised land to burn out the works of the enemy we ask you to send that fire into our body soul and spirit mind will and emotion yes, today yes, that as we I transition know. into april we go mm -hmm. with no pride no trace of pride mm -hmm. fear and pride must die mm -hmm. on this deliverance thursday i speak to every existing fear mm -hmm. and every existing pride in the lives of those who are hearing me and I command you now, uproot, uproot and yes, go, Jesus, uproot yes, and go. Lord, any Lord. existing pride in yes. our lives, any existing fear in our lives, I serve you notice now. Right Come on, right cough up, right vomit right up. Right right come up in the mighty name of jesus christ fear and pride any name that you come under anywhere that you are hiding may the lord jesus christ of nazareth expose you and may the power of the holy spirit uproot you in the name of jesus every ounce of fear and pride be uprooted by the sound of my voice whether you're in the people on arrows internet radio on instagram on youtube on facebook or on tiktok i speak to you now in the realm of the spirit and i command every spirit of pride every spirit of fear every spirit of unbelief every spirit of rebellion every spirit of dishonor that is working in and through our lives yes, we Lord. command you now we hook you now and we pull you out in the mighty name the of name jesus of christ jesus. you will not stop our breakthrough you will mm. not stop us from walking in the fullness that abraham walked in when he was severed from lot in the name of jesus christ we thank you lord god almighty that we have been delivered we have been set free and we have been made whole in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah come on you got to believe that you have been set free from pride and if you see the enemy try to bring it back into your life with simple things someone says something to you at work today and it's supposed to embarrass you, it's supposed to hurt you, it's supposed to disrespect you or dishonor you, and you feel like you need to defend it. You feel like something is saying to you, she's rude, out of order. Tell her about her parts. Tell her that she's thinking, confront her. Don't let anyone walk over you like that. That's flesh. That's flesh. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I ma Jesus made himself of no reputation. He had reason to defend himself when he was accused because he was perfect we are not perfect maybe we deserve it or maybe god is just using it to show us that there is still imperfections in us when you get to the point where someone can say something bad and you choose to be like jesus and say nothing then you are ready to go in jesus name come on it's not easy come on i'm not saying guys that this is the indication that you're a christian or that you're perfect no i'm not saying that at all it's not easy it's a day-by-day -day process and that's why god doesn't look at where we are he looks mostly at where we're going mm -hmm. and as long as we're walking with him he's perfecting us moment by moment day by day but from the inside out amen praise god praise god praise god okay so yesterday we stopped at uh at verse 6 in romans 12 we stopped at verse 6 and so we're going to try and get a couple of verses done before our time because today is the last day tomorrow we are looking at scriptures and lives and experiences and um and and and, and circumstances that has to do with breakthrough amen hallelujah glory to god and so we are appointed for sacrifice verse 6 picking up it says we have different gifts according to the grace given us if a man's gift is prophesying let him use it in proportion to his faith if a man's gift is prophesying let him use it in proportion to his faith and so we have to sacrifice to grow in faith we have to sacrifice to grow in faith so many of us i'm reading a book oh by the way remember we have a covenant we fourth watch people have a covenant to read four books those of you who made it that is some didn't 
but some daily. A lot of you daily. We have a covenant to read four books, a minimum of four books for this year. And it doesn't matter. It's four books that you can read. So if it's a 80-page book or a 20-page book and you've never read these books before, if you're accustomed to reading 200-page books and just to fulfill this covenant, you choose four 80-page um, books. That's not fair. That's not, that's not honest. <laughs> I'm calling you out because you're my family. But I know none of you are doing that. Amen? Um, but 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 because I, I i i my history has not been one of reading i'm already finished one book um i was giving myself to the end of march to finish i finished one in march and i started another one and i'm at page 46 so everyone is doing good by the grace of god amen praise god but we have covenanted that we're gonna read four books for this year along with the bible in 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 between but we want to start setting some goals that will take us to a high place and it is books that are um god-centered that will help us to mature and to grow in god and so please if you have slacked off please pick up at the pace because you gave your word and your word is your bond let your yay be yay and your nay be nay and so everything requires a sacrifice so if we are called to prophesy we must prophesy out of faith not out of giftings gifting is fine gifting can be the the, the, the gift of prophecy the spirit of prophecy and so if we prophesy out of that we will be be able to speak accurate things to encourage to edify to exhort to comfort but we will not ascend to the office of prophet come on and so to get to the office of prophet, one, God has to call you to it. Two, prophecy has to come from faith and love, not from gift. Come on, are you hearing me? It is not easy to sacrifice when the gift of prophecy is there. Most people who have the gift of prophecy, hear me, and I'm not knocking anyone. Most people who have the gift of prophecy, every opportunity they get, they start to reel off prophecy, prophetic words every opportunity they're on a bus they're walking they, they, they they're in church they're sitting beside somebody in church and then just it, the pastor preaching or worship going on and them either call the person outside or start to prophesy in church to the person that's a gift of prophecy that will if you continue like that you will never get to the office of prophet You have to be willing to sacrifice even sometimes, even sometimes, something that God has told you about someone because he has not released it, release you to say it to the person. Maybe he showed it to you because you're his prophet. Maybe he showed it to you because he's trained you to be his prophet. Maybe he showed it to you because he wanted to see what kind of maturity you would demonstrate. There are many reasons why God can show you something about someone, but not everything that he shows. Is to be told some things are just to be prayed about in your private corner are you able to sacrifice the joy of telling someone the Lord says you're gonna be pregnant in in, in 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 six days the Lord said this year you're gonna have a baby the Lord says this year you're gonna get married the Lord says this year you're gonna get a financial breakthrough you know how much joy that brings when you tell someone that and you see them start to cry oh God You feel like a king. Oh, and people start calling you a mighty man of God. Start calling you a prophet or a prophetess. It feels good. But God wants to know if we can sacrifice that feel good for the office. Because the office is only open to those who are mature, who have self-control. Come on. Are you hearing me? And so we have to sacrifice because we have been appointed and anointed but we still must wait on the appointed time of God. And that's where the sacrifice comes. That's where the sacrifice comes. Can you wait upon God? Can you wait upon God? He's telling you all these things, but he has not released you to run. He's telling you all these things and showing you these things about people, but he has not released you to deliver it. Because you have not been placed in the position. You have not been ordained, anointed and appointed for the position. But you are getting the information about the situation. Hallelujah. 
sacrifice. Amen? And so by the measure of your faith, and so that faith there is faith in God that in the right time and in the right season, you will be able to prophesy to, to the effectiveness and to the glory of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Verse 7. If it is serving, let him serve. Serving is not one of the most exciting things that we, 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 we look forward to. Serving requires a heart that is covenanted and committed to sacrifice because you will serve people and they will not appreciate it. You will serve people and they will turn around and say, you have never done anything for them in this life. So serving is a sacrifice. Amen? Hallelujah. If it is teaching, let him teach. Oh, that one, you can, I can tell you. I have taught and I am married to a woman who taught and I have been to her school and I have seen where children one day love the teacher and then the next day they think that the teacher is the worst thing. They go home and tell the parents evil, mean things about the teacher. It is a thankless job, but it's a job that Jesus holds dear. Why? Because throughout his career on the earth, he was called what? Teacher. <laughs> they can do um, communion so that the arrows people can go and they finish the lesson. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, so, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break here and do communion, uh, so that the the, the guys on arrows, because they have a set time that they have to break away. So I'm gonna do the communion now for the arrows family so that they can have their communion and then we, we get back to this part of the story and, and, and finish up this line because today is the last day for this. Amen? So there's only two more verses left. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your blessings and your favor towards us. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we can eat of your body and drink of your blood as a mark of our covenant to you in your covenant to us. We can only ride on the covenant that you have made, a covenant that is perfect, covenant of your body broken for us a covenant of your blood shed for us thank you lord that we are renewed restored strengthened and empowered by your body entering our body and our life is life more abundantly by your blood that gives us life in jesus name amen and as the lord jesus christ took the bread he blessed it and broke it he gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And likewise, he took the cup. He took a sup and he, he blessed it and took a sup and he said, Drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Arrows, family, as you leave in the time when you need to leave, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have an amazing day, God's way, today. God bless you. As your time expires and you leave, we love you and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, April 1st, breakthrough month. Expect your breakthrough. Remember to write down the things that you want God to give you a breakthrough on. But write them down with a divine expectation, not a human one. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so I see a question uh, someone has asked. I think it's Sister, Dor uh, Sister Dorrit or Pastor Dorset has um, sought to give an answer. I think the question is, how do you know when God has released you to go? When God has released you, okay, there are two ways. Understand this very, very clear, very, very clearly. The same God who spoke to you clearly and gave you a word, hear me, 
If you are convinced that God has spoken to you and given you a word, that same God is able to speak to you with the same clarity to tell you when to go. If you didn't hear, if you heard God clearly, that God says there's a beam in Pastor Wade's eye, go tell him and pick it out. But the same God is unable to communicate with you as clearly as to how or when or where, then maybe, <laughs> just maybe, just maybe you didn't hear from the God of heaven. Just maybe. Come on. Because he's a God of order. order. Right. Yes. I was going to say that. Because if, yes, if for example, good morning, everybody. If for example, an event is going on, our pastor is preaching. Pastor is preaching and you have to take somebody outside to tell them the word from the Lord. You know that was not the time. That's right. Because God is a God of order. Or sometimes persons will go to the person inside the church while pastor is preaching with the word from the Lord. That is disorder. Mm -hmm. So those situations, you can see what is happening in your atmosphere. And you will know whether or not God will. God is saying go. God made us give it a word. And you have to wait until um, church is finished. Or wait until pastor is finished. Or wait until, you know, maybe if you're, you're a person, maybe book up in the bathroom or something. But it can't be that God is going to, pastor is there preaching. And you are going to take somebody out of service carry them outside to say i have to give you this word no god says i must tell you this no yes um the, the the god's voice often sounds like our voice it's still and small and quiet but it often sounds like we're speaking to ourselves in the same way god can use our voice to speak to us whether you like it or not the same way satan can use our voices and speak to us as well satan will prophesy something that is seemingly good to us but it is designed to create confusion as 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 um as as minister patricia said just now disruptive spirit and so it may seem good but it is disruptive amen so 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 satan says there is a demonic spirit in the lady sitting beside you and you said no but that must be God that must be God because Satan would not reveal a demon that he put in this woman beside me or oh, really you think so so church is going on and this lady has a demon and you say woman of God the demon of whatever whatever is affecting you and the demon begin to manifest in the middle of service in the middle of the preaching, pastor is at a place where everybody is just being convicted, reconciled, converted. And this demon began to rail up because you touch our button. Mm -hmm. And the demon start to scream and carry on. And everybody start to turn around and look. It's a real demon. But was that God that told you to rile up that demon? Mm -hmm. Satan is willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice. A demon possessed woman for the church the kingdom of God to be affected when he when he ministered to Eve he wasn't trying to just destroy Adam and Eve in the garden he was trying to destroy the generations mm -hmm. that would come that's his that's how Satan works and so you might think but this must be God God would want me to help this person God would want me to God would want you could justify till the cows come home people of God if you are immature and don't know the wisdom of God, don't understand the protocols of God, you could be doing what you think is God, even something that is good, but it is still not God. It is still not God. I've seen it many times. I've been to conferences. I've been to, to, to um, uh, uh, what you call them, the, the, the training thing that we, we, we do. Yeah, same conferences, many of these things. And I've been to churches and see where, 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 where disruptive spirits come upon real men and women of God. And because of pride, lack of humility, they begin to minister at the back of the church or in the middle of the church while pastor, the leader, the head, or even a visiting pastor is ministering and cause serious disruption. 
That's wrong. It's not God. So, so, so to answer your question, sister, there are two things. One, because God is the God of order, you will not hear that you are to do something in the midst of something else that God is doing already. Amen? You will not, God will not allow you to say something to someone who is not ready to receive it. He has prepared their heart to receive it. And so when he gives you the go ahead, it's because he has prepared the person. And two, the other one, I mean, I could give you a lot of others. I know some persons who are experienced are thinking, passed away, they can say this, 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 this. I couldn't give all of them this morning. Amen? There are many others. Uh, the indication that would either tell you that it's time to go or, or, or not yet. Amen? Plenty. But the other one is also, who are you submitted to? Who is your, who is your leader? Who is the one? Because sometimes prophets end up starting their own church, running off on their own. And let me tell you, I can say this comfortably, not because I want anybody to submit to me, but because I once used to be in that position where I didn't want anybody to tell me I can't go pray for someone, preach to someone or prophesy to someone. I was once there. And I realized that it was a, a, a <laughs> hallelujah. A Pastor Marsha said it earlier. God is a God of order. And order cannot reign in disorder. If our lives are in disorder, if we feel that we don't have to um, allow anyone to test our prophetic word, to see if it is legitimate or from God, or to give wisdom concerning the timing, then we are in disorder. You don't always are going, you're not always going to be able to do that. But it is part of what God will use to mature us, to humble us, and to bring us to the place like Nathan, where it wasn't about the fact that he's a prophet, but about the fact that God sent him to restore David. That's all that was important. So he could have gone and said, Thus saith the Lord, you killed Uriah, you took advantage of Bathsheba, you commit adultery, you impregnated the man's wife, Kill him, cause other people to be to be uh, uh, complicit in your murder plot. A stomach get it and a stomach you, cause I'm a prophet of God. The devil is a liar. It is not about us. So that's one of the other ways as well. If you have to deliver a word so that you can be elevated, so that you can be considered a mighty man or a mighty woman of God, you are not yet ready. To ascend to the office of prophet, you're still using your gift as the wings of an eagle. And pretty soon, somebody with a shotgun, namely the devil, will shoot you out of the sky and you won't know why. You'll just know that you can no longer fly. And we pray and hope that you will not die. Amen? And a lot of persons who walk in that spirit often end up a prophet lie. <laughs> yes, go ahead. No, I, I, I was saying that. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. So 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 as 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 the word has come that if we teach we must sacrifice. And so I'm sacrificing even time this morning to teach you the importance of being humble as you raise in God. The more accurate your prophetic gifting becomes is the more you need to learn that it is not about you, it is about the gift of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Hallelujah. And one of the ways yes. to, to know whether you are to go or not, depending on how you are going to give the word, because you have to remember what a prophetic does, edify, exhort, and comfort. Yes. So if you know that when you, this word, based on what God showed you, you have to process it. God, how do I give the word to, um, that it, it honors your word that says it must edify, exhort, or comfort? Mm. So you have to wait. Sometimes you have to, to, to wait and process. It's not exactly what you get in your head. You are to say out of your mouth. You still have to go back to God and say, God, this is very revealing. This is very scandalous. This mm. is very, you know, this type of word is very, because it's not a happy go word. You're going to get a house. No, it's a word that that um, exposes a person's character, exposes a per, you know, the, behind the scenes things that persons are doing. Yes. And God wants to tell them to, to, to stop doing it. 
and you have to ask God now, how do I tell the word so that it exhort, edifies, and comfort? Sometimes you have to sit on the word for maybe some days praying over it mm. and say, God, let my let my tongue be your tongue so that when I speak, like Nathan, I do not cause harm, yes. but I cause um, love to manifest. Praise God. And just one example, I remember listening to a, a, a young miss talking about a, a word that she got from her pastor. Her pastor gave her a word to give somebody. So her pastor got a word from the Lord and her pastor told her that she is the one that the Lord said to deliver the word. So she's based on what she got, she said, um, I'm not bother, she's not going to bother go back to God to find out how God says she's to give the word. She's just going to give the word straight as though she got it because his pastor told her that God said she's to give it. And when she went and she gave the person the word, the, up to the last time when I heard her giving the testimony, she said, oh, no, the people then don't talk to her back. It has caused a big rift and divide with her relationship with the persons and her because of the nature of the word and she said our pastor told her to give it is the same way she gave it she didn't give it out of exhorting edifying and comforting she as some get it and as some give it and it caused a big divide and and and, and even now she's in pain because what she was doing she was sharing with the group of people that we were listening to that boy right now she's it's so painful that the people even now the people don't um talk to her because of the word that she gave or maybe how she gave the oh, word she gave the word mm. not the word so how. hallelujah and so it's important as we grow in God, because let me tell you, we as the Fourth Watch family, we are growing in God and we are going to hear from God and get words of encouragement from God to give to people. But we must also demonstrate our growth in God by being mature enough to understand that God's word is not to destroy it is to reconcile Amen. to edify to exhort and to comfort now watch this some of you might be thinking but pastor what about when god says this person is committing adultery and need to stop they need to be educated that's what edify means so you need to educate them maybe you need to sit down and don't 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 go in no prideful position about thus saith the lord i come as a prophet of god and i come to let you know that god says you're committing adultery and you need to stop you need to change and you all do it in church not even privately which would be bad and not so bad but in church openly so you destroy the person completely. There's no reconciling because nobody's going to trust the person, the weak and the immature. And even some of the mature are going to always be looking at the person side-eyed and cross-eyed and saying, what, cross-eyed and saying, hmm, adulterer, come on. And so you would have not edified that person so that they can know what God wants them to do and to stop doing it. Edification means bringing the person to a place of knowledge understanding and wisdom that they make the right decisions or should I say the God decisions with their life Amen. come on and so there is no specter no sector no element of what you may hear from God that doesn't fall under edifying exhorting and comforting nothing even the person committing murder you have to educate them by God's grace and why God does not like murder. Why murder is wrong? So that they can be convicted and converted and reconciled unto God. Amen? That's what God wants. That's what God wants. Hallelujah. So I'll just read the last part of this verse and then we can close. It says, verse 8, If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, hallelujah, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently or show care in one's work or duties. That's what diligent means or diligently. And it is showing mercy. Let him do it cheerfully. So all these things require sacrifice because they are not normal to the, the average human being. The average human being is not generous. 
the average human being does not govern diligently. They want to, to, to your, your supervisors hardly ever govern or supervise diligently, looking to care for others as they do their duty. They, 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 there's hardly anyone that shows mercy in these times. And so all these things require sacrifice. Sacrifice of self, sacrifice of pride, sacrificing fear, sacrificing our own self-aggrandization. And just being humble like Jesus, walking in the midst of a crowd where only those who know you personally can come and kiss you to betray you. Because the average man cannot tell you different from the average man. Hallelujah. 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 Can we sacrifice our own name, our own who I am, to blend in, though our anointing does not blend in? Your anointing don't have to blend in, but you do. You have to be of no reputation, because the only one with a reputation is the man in the high mansion in the sky. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this morning. Thank you so much for just working with us on this particular week of activities. Romans 12, appointed for sacrifice. Uh, some of us, based on some of the things that you have heard, will need to go back through Romans 12 and just look at the things that are listed here and look at your own life, our own lives, and say to ourselves, Lord, how can I sacrifice more? How can I give up more of me so that I can be filled with more of you in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the time in your presence. We thank you for your love, for your blessings, for your favor. We thank you, Lord, that you have caused us to come to the end of another month and you have kept us from harm and danger. Many were the plans of the enemy against us. But you delivered us out of them all in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May the Lord strengthen you in the, for the rest of this month, the hours for the rest of this month. And may the Lord accelerate you into the month of April. May your breakthroughs be many and back to back. May your breakthroughs bring breakthrough not just for you, but for your family and for your community and even for your nation. May your breakthrough in prayer be a breakthrough for the rest of the world. And may your breakthrough in finances be a breakthrough for the kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day. God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day, his way in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you and we love the world I want to God bless you. God bless you. Have a great one, man. Thank you so much. Remember, Hallelujah. you're appointed for sacrifice. Hallelujah. Version 3.0. Oh, uh, oh, it's 4.0 today? Mm -hmm. 4.0, yes. Version 4.0 today. Appointed for sacrifice. Amen. Yes. Bless you guys. Hallelujah. Whoa.